waiting for years to get a rabbi to come talk to us at this beautiful Passover time of year. And this year, we got a rabbi. Yeah. Rabbi Bonnie Lawrence is here and also known as the Leadership Mastery Speaker, is the founder and CEO of the Leadership Mastery Institute. The company is dedicated to providing training, consulting, coaching, and materials to help others meet the challenges of their leadership roles in life. Everyone is a leader in their own lives. Why not be the best? Rabbi Bonnie graduated from UCLA, yay UCLA, <laughs> and Whittier College School of Law. In 2013, Rabbi Bonnie was ordained by the Jewish Spiritual Leaders Institute based in New York. She is available for officiating at all life cycle events, including interfaith weddings. She also provides pastoral care counseling and is available for public speaking engagements. We are so honored to have Rabbi Bonnie Lawrence. Thank you. Sound test, is this on? Can everybody hear me? Yes. Awesome. Okay, now I have to figure out where to put it in. My pocket here. All right, everybody. First of all, Marianne, you're a tough act to follow, wherever you are. <laughs> Hope I can live up to that. Thank you for that magnificent, magnificent performance. I want to move my chair over here because I want to make this interactive and I like to hang with people and talk about this. So first and foremost, Chag Sameach, Happy Passover. Tonight is the second night of Passover, and I want to start with, saying, with lighting some candles, saying some blessings. Those of you who know the prayers, you are more than welcome to join me. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kedeshanu B'mitzvot Tav V'tzivanu the Hadlik Ner Shel Yon Tav. Blessings from God who has commanded us to light the holiday candles. There is another prayer I want to say. It's called the Shehekianu. And yes, it takes a long time to learn how to pronounce that, for those of you wondering. I want to make sure I get it right, so I'm going to read it. It's Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Alam Shehekianu Vikie Manu. Vihigianu Lazman Haze. Blessed are you, Lord our God, creator of the universe, who gave us life, sustained us, and created us, and enabled us to reach this joyous season of our exodus from Egypt. So why is it that we celebrate Passover every year? Anybody have any ideas, any suggestions? We are commanded to do that in the Torah, in the book of Shemo, in the book of Exodus, because every year we are to be reminded that it is as if we personally were taken out of bondage in Egypt along with our children. We have to teach it from generation to generation to generation. So let me ask you this question. Why did the Jews wander around the desert for 40 years? Was it mindless? Was it aimless? Did it serve a purpose? Or was it because the men forgot to ask for directions? <laughs> it served an incredible purpose. And I'm going to read very briefly from the Torah because the blueprint for the Exodus and our spiritual growth and change actually is in Genesis 1. And then I will transpose it over to Passover and the Exodus. So I am reading from the Hebrew script it's Chaim. There's only going to be one line in Hebrew. The rest will be English, I promise. Okay. It's Bereshit bara Elohim et Hashemayim ve'et Eretz. When God began to create heaven and earth, the earth being unformed and void with darkness and the surface of the deep, and I should have my glasses on, but I refuse to, and a word... And a wind from God sweeping over the water, God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and there was evening, and there was morning the first day. 
So how does this transpose into Passover? Here the Hebrews are slaves, they're in darkness, and they cry out to God, help us, help us, help us, we don't want to be slaves anymore. And Moses appears and goes, wait a minute, the people were supposed to go into the desert to do a three-day worship service. Moses goes to Pharaoh to ask for permission. Pharaoh says yes, and then he says, no, you can't go. And then Moses goes back and talks to God, and we have 10 plagues, and for the first nine plagues, every time uh, Pharaoh said yes, and then he changed his mind, no, and God visited one plague after another, after another upon Pharaoh and the people, except for the Hebrew slaves. Finally, with the 10th plague, the slaying of the firstborn, except for the Hebrew slaves, bless you, by the way, um, then Pharaoh said, I've had it, go, get out of here, enough, go. The people left in such a hurry that they could not allow their bread to rise. To this day, we eat matzah. Passover matzah is different from regular matzah. How so? Because to be kosher for Passover, the matzah can only bake for 17 minutes. It goes another second into 18 minutes. It's not kosher for Passover. So I invite all of you afterwards. I have boxes of matzah for people to share for those of you who really have a taste for matzah, and for those of you who have never tasted matzah, I know some of you haven't. So let's go back to our story of Egypt. Egypt in Hebrew is the word Mitzrayim, the land of Egypt. But there's another meaning for that, there's another way to pronounce that, and it's Mitzarim, which means narrowness inside yourself. So the journey out of Egypt, pardon me, out of Mitzrayim, is more than a journey from the land, from slavery, to liberation, to freedom. It's also a journey from darkness and narrowness inside ourselves to wandering around the desert while we deal with what's, what our darkness is to ultimate freedom. So it is indeed a journey that took 40 years. And what happened in those 40 years? Yes, there was a lot of wandering, a lot of people, and we joke about people being lost um, and about men not asking for directions. And I also add, and they forgot to ask where the oil is in the process. They should have done that. But what happens? The people originally complain. We want to go back. You took us out of a land where we had at least food and we knew what we were up against. Now we have nothing. God sends the people manna from heaven. God sends the people quail, and it isn't good enough. We have the situation of Moses going up the mountain to receive the Aseret Hadibrot, the Ten Commandments, for 40 days. He comes back down, only to find that the people are worshiping the golden calf. So he gets angry, he smashes down the tablets, goes back up the mountain. In the meantime, the Levites were commanded to slaughter everyone who openly worshiped the golden calf, then the golden calf was ground into some kind of an elixir, and everyone else was made to drink it. Those who quietly, who secretly worshipped the golden calf, died immediately. Everyone else was allowed to live. So we have a process of going through the desert. It is a journey. What's the inner journey? What's our inner darkness that is stopping us from sharing our light and the 1% gifts that were all different here that we're meant to share with each other? Okay, we are 99% the same. And then some, I'm told. So why are we really here? We're here to work through our darkness and to share our uniqueness with each other, with our gifts. What's in the darkness? Do we walk around sometimes feeling that we're victimized? Like we're children? That we're going around blaming people? Look at what the people did. The same thing. The generation that was taken out of Egypt is not the same generation that made it and was allowed to enter the promised land because of the mindset, because of the need to work through the issues and to realize what God had did for them, what their darkness is, and to transform themselves so that they could enter the promised land and be there. Any questions at this point? Anybody want to make comments? Boy, you're making it tough on me. <laughs> you really are. So we go and do this every year. 
we celebrate because we are commanded in every generation to remind ourselves of the need for spiritual growth and change for what God did for us and does every day for each and every one of us and to teach our children as well. And I have on here, I have brought what we go through with the Seder, with the symbolism, and I'm going to start. This is not wine, this is grape juice. If I were at home, it would be, gra- it would be wine. It is kosher for Passover, grape juice. We, pu- we go through four cups of wine that we drink. We have a cup for Elijah, the prophet, who when he reappears is said to herald the coming of the messianic era. And something added that in recent years is a cup for Miriam, who was Moses and Aaron's sister. And why we do that is to honor the fact that there was Miriam's well following the people around as they wandered through the desert to make sure that they had water and survived. So I am going to go through the Seder book. Now this is the 60 minute Seder book. There are 30 minute Seder books. When you have little ones at the dinner table, you can't exactly take hours to go through the Seder. Um, Some people do. I have been at Seder's where we didn't get to the food until midnight. And it's like, where's the food? And I have been at Seder's where there are young children and you just go through everything as fast as you can and get to the food. So it varies. This is going to be a rather shortened uh, version because I have about 20 minutes. I encourage everybody to ask me questions. So if you have a question, raise your hand. I would like to explain this as we go along. So I'm going to start with the grape juice and say the blessing. And again, for those of you who know the blessings, you're welcome to join me. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Ha'alam Borei Pri Hagafen. Praised are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has commanded us to drink the fruit of the vine. That's not bad. For those of you who drink kosher wine and ceremonial kosher wine, you know what I'm talking about. All right, we have the Seder plate. And somebody earlier asked me about the Seder plate and what it is. Now, after drinking the wine, we wash our hands, which at this moment is just symbolic. And we go to a Seder plate. We have, and we can pass this around if people want to see it or they can come up afterwards. We have vegetables, we have karpas, we have the ceremony of yachatz, of the breaking of the middle matzah, which we then hide because we need to keep people awake so it becomes dessert later called the afikoman. Traditionally, the kids are being kept up at night long enough to go find this and then it gets ransom and then the kids can go to sleep. So there's math, method to this method. Uh, there's madness to this method, of course. Anybody want to volunteer to hide this? <laughs> Dina, you're, you're <laughs> I don't promise you I'm gonna ransom it from you, but we're gonna keep going here. <laughs> okay. And on the Seder plate, we have the vegetables and we have a variety of vegetables. Okay. And we ask, we have four questions that are asked. And they are, the first one is, people know this, Manishtana Halayla Hazei Mikol Halaylot. Why is this night different from all other nights? And the answers come, on all other nights we may eat chametz and matzah, but on this night only matzah. So what is chametz? Anybody know? Well, everything else, but not really. So yeast. That which is, uh, I'm sorry, who said that? Yes, thank you so much. Leavening, it's yeast. Why do we not eat anything with yeast for eight days? It is symbolic of cleaning out our darkness. It is symbolic of the fact that we left in a hurry and couldn't let the dough to rise. It's also symbolic, in my word, of spring cleaning. You've got to clean out the fridge and everything else. And your, and your Thank you. 
symbolic of the ego, the pumped up ego to bring you down a notch or two and then some. So it is very traditional and also it is one of the laws of Passover to do that. I have no comets in my house and I will not eat any until after, oh, next Tuesday at sundown. And if you think it's not, it's fun eating matzah brai, which is an omelet made with matzah. It gets tired after a while. <laughs> but we do it because we are commanded to do it and to remind ourselves of the meaning of the holiday. The next answer is on all, our, on all other nights, we eat many vegetables, but on this night, we eat only maror. What is maror? Bitter herbs, thank you. It's horseradish. White or red mixed with beets, so it's not as bad. We eat bitter herbs to remind us of the bitterness of our people in slavery. Then we answer, on all other nights, we don't dip even once, but on this night, we dip twice. What on earth are we talking about? One of the things that's passed around the table is usually a spring vegetable, usually parsley and salt water, bitter tears of slavery. The other thing that is passed around is a mixture of haroses, which is chopped walnuts, apples, and wine, dipped in wine, that we eat with the maror to, wine, to remind us again of the bitterness that it took to build and what the slaves were doing. And so it's all very, very remembering. And then the final answer is, on all other nights we eat either sitting up or reclining, but on this night, why do we recline? Some people actually recline, at least the prayer leader. Some people have a pillow to show that they're reclining. Why? Because free men ate reclining if they chose to. Slaves were not allowed to do that. We then go in to the four types of children who ask questions. We have, and backing up here, the Haggadah is read, we take turns. One person does not do all the reading. And I always used to kind of sit myself in a space where I would get a short paragraph, not the long one. <laughs> Some people relate to this, it's great, okay. So we have the wise child who might be studious or innately smart. They pay attention to detail and enjoy learning. The child needs opportunities to discover the meaning of Passover on their own. We have the wicked child. He's not probably not really wicked, but only rebellious. He'd rather be doing something else other than sitting at a table waiting for the food to arrive but we do this anyway. So we keep telling them this compelling story and encourage people to participate. We then have the ch simple child who needs short, easy to understand explanations. And we have the young child who is young to even ask for himself what this means. Right. Anybody have questions right now, comments? Yes. Um, do you think Orthodox homes are pouring a cup no. Honestly, I don't. I think they should, but... Well, to understand, to explain what you just asked. What's your name? Shoshana. Shoshana, thank you. Elijah's cup is traditional. The cup for Miriam is not traditional. But as women are becoming more involved in the leadership of Judaism, 30 years ago, I could not be a rabbi in any, any movement. We are adding Miriam's cup to honor the woman's role in the religion. Yay. So, I didn't bring an orange with me. I didn't have one at home, but the orange would have been a good thing to bring as well, symbolizing fruit, productivity, springtime, produce, bounty. on my talit. No, just that I like it. <laughs> so that's a good question though. Um, any other questions before I move on? Yes. So how long Passover and when do you do the Seder? Do you do it, do you do one Seder? Do you do more than one? Or do you do it we do two Seders, one last night, the first night, 
another one tonight, which I'm sharing with you folks as briefly as possible, but I'm sharing with you, and I'm sorry I couldn't bring all the food, but it wasn't feasible. Um, and it lasts for eight days. It will be over a week from tonight at sundown, at which point everyone is going to raid all the bakery and get all the hummets and rolls and pizzas they can. I'm having fun with this, so thank you for <laughs> indulging me. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Um, so, within the, those eight days, did not eat anything with yeast, but are there any other forbidden things? Hummus is anything with yeast and anything that could possibly be fermented unless it's under very strict observation for uh, kosher compliance for Passover. Uh, and there are customs that are different. Ashkenazi Jews typically do not eat beans because they can ferment. Sephardic Jews may eat beans. There's a lot of customs, uh, depending upon the, the families and where people come from, a lot of different traditions. Why do you repeat the Seder the second night? Good question. Probably because we didn't know exactly when it was because of the moon. There was no science. Okay, so we have two nights of favor. And I would, honestly, I'm gonna have to check in the tar again to see if we have to do it a second night anyway commanded, but the first night is definitely commanded. After that, we weren't sure, so. I think in Israel, right in Israel, there's only one night. Yeah, one yeah. night in Israel. One, one night in Israel. Thank you. Okay. Why are the only, why do we need four glasses? Oh, I knew somebody was going to ask that. Why don't we just go through the Seder and we'll answer that? Because we like to drink wine. There are four. <laughs> it's traditional. <laughs> but, but we do more than just drink the wine. There are certain symbolisms that we do with the wine. Okay. Now we get to the ten plagues. What are the ten plagues? They are blood, frogs, and I'm going to do this ceremonially. Because as we go through the Seder, we diminish our glass each time when we say the ten plagues. Why do we do this? Because the people who are after us are also children of God. And we mourn their loss as well, that they didn't see the light, that they behaved the way they did. So, I need to fill this up a little more. And they are, and you're welcome to say them with me. Blood, frogs, lice, flies, cattle plague, boils, hail, locusts, darkness, and the killing of the firstborn. God has instructed us to take no pleasure in the suffering of the Egyptians. Although wine is a symbol of celebration, it is diminished as we reflect on their suffering. To commemorate each plague, we dip our little finger into the wine, then place a drop on our plate while reading the name of the plagues, which we've just done. We sing a lot of songs, and I will spare you my singing, as we found out a few minutes ago. <laughs> but we thank God for our blessings, because whatever God did for us, it really is enough. Dayenu, and yet God continues to give and give and give and give us more. And then we drink more wine. <laughs> what else are we going to do? Baruch Ata Adonai Elohim Melech Elohim Borei Pri Hagavah Amen. And I would I would normally finish each glass and we would fill it up, but All right. So what are the other symbols of Passover? We wash our hands again because we have just dipped it in wine. We say the blessing over the matzah as it is passed around. 
Each person gets a piece of matzah. Can we do that now? Is that okay if we do that? Yeah. Got enough? I have more if we need it, so let's take a moment and get the... Everybody take a little piece, please. concept of tikkun olam. Olam is the universe, tikkun is healing. And it is a very Jewish concept of the fact that we are here to help heal the world. God created an imperfect world and needs us to perfect it. So we ourselves are also imperfect. And how can we go out to heal the world if we don't go inside ourselves and do our own healing as well in the process of healing the world? How can we do world service and truly help people if we go out horribly wounded? Yes, we will learn. Yes, we will heal as we interact with others. And yet healing begins within. And we each need to assume responsibility for that. We have matzah. People want matzah, have matzah. Awesome. So let's say the blessing over the matzah. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech ha'alam Asher kedushanu b'mitzvotah v'tzivanu al achilat matzah. Please eat some if you haven't ever, if you haven't yet. My favorite matzah is burnt, by the way. It's good burnt. Okay. Next, on the seder plate, we would eat the maror, the bitter herbs, and it's symbolized here. For those of you who want to see it later. And we would also eat what we call a Hillel sandwich, which we're not going to do, but we take matzah and we mix it with maror and herosis. And then we get to what everybody's favorite part of the meal is, which is when do we eat? And it's now. So that would be this part of the eating. And we're going to say that we've already gotten there. There are other symbols, which I have, what, five minutes left? Yes. Okay, so I can be, I'll be available afterwards. We now say blessings after the meal, and we end it with, Osei Shalom Bim Ramav, Huya Ase Shalom, Aleinu Ve'al, Kol Yisrael Bim Ruh, Amen. May the Holy One who creates peace in the heavens grant peace for all of us and all Israel. Amen. We have another glass of wine, and we welcome Elijah. All of us stand up. The door is opened, and we welcome Elijah. Somebody's elected to open the door, please. <laughs> Usually at this time, somebody's cousin, husband, whoever shows up, and we go, hi. You know, it's, it's good. Are we worthy as a people, worthy enough for you to present yourself to us, Elijah? Are we? holy enough to share the Passover Seder with you, Elijah the prophet. If so, please enter and let us welcome you. And then when Elijah does not enter, we say the following prayer. Someday the prophet Elijah will return to earth and lead us to an age of peace. We pray this day will come soon. And now we may close the door and sit down. And we honor Miriam's cup, we honor Elijah, we have the food, and now, as Shoshana's mentioned, 
We have the counting of the Omer. We shall count off seven weeks and one day for 50 days. Then you shall bring an offering of new grain to the Lord. And on that 50th day, we consider it Shavuos. Some people call it Pentecost. It is the day when Moses received the Aserat Hadibrod on Mount Sinai. I am officially out of time. <laughs> and I would like to be welcome back, so we're not going to push it. But <laughs> does anybody have any questions that I can answer? Good question. Um, lots of things, as long as there's not chumets, people can eat anything from brisket. Uh, let's put it this way, food in the kosher category to begin with, and then food that is specifically kosher for Passover itself, like the matzah. And people sometimes eat brisket. There's all kinds of wonderful foods to eat, which if I mention, I'm gonna get very hungry, so we're not gonna do that. But I'll jo all joking aside, people make potato kugel, and uh, kosher for Passover, noodle kugel. Kugel is a pudding. Thank you, who said that? I was blanking out on that. And meats and carrot puddings and fruit compotes and basically regular meals. But there's no hummus there and we try to make everything as kosher for Passover as possible. Oh no, it's in the package. Some people actually do burn it, but I don't even want to risk that. <laughs> this particular one is Yehuda, but they have, uh, and that's from Israel. There are different, is, there are different matzos. I have gluten-free. I have gluten-free matzo. I think they should do that. I think they should do that, Jen. I, I think I saw some in the supermarket. I didn't. Awesome. Anybody else? Questions, comments? Um, Question over here. Yes. Uh, is this the only meal that's called Seder, or are there other? The Seder means order of service. Other meals are qu called Seder for um, Tu Bishvat, when we celebrate the planting of the trees in the spring season. So the, traditionally, people say Seder referring to Passover. Other questions? Other comments? Thank you. Well, we're going to sing. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Somebody wants to go home and go to sleep. That's it. <laughs> okay, so. No, because we have to finish this service first, and then we find out if we come. It's, it's a technical little thing. Am I right on that, Shoshana? That's no. All right, no. so, so we're going to. You find the upper and then you complete the service. Is it? Yes. Well. I will, I will acknowledge that then. So, okay, where's the Afi coming? Who wants to go find it? <laughs> we got to take her here. <laughs> All right, I want to end tonight, and this is totally unrehearsed, with Ose Shalom that we sing. It's at, uh, at the end of many, many prayers that we say, and we say it in services on Saturday and throughout the week. And one final comment, if I may. The exodus out of Egypt is so central to the Jewish religion that we always thank God for taking us out of Egypt for performing the wonders. Mechamocha ba'elim Adonai. Thank you, God. Thank you for the wonders every day as we live and breathe. Now, I want to end this with Ose Shalom. And it's Ose, the words are Ose Shalom bin Ramav. Kuya Ose Shalom. Aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael v'imru. Amen. I said it earlier. The meaning hasn't changed. The heart connection, I hope, has changed. And we are all connected more here tonight by singing that. Um, I'm going to defer to Florence because she has a much nicer voice than I do. Sing along with me.
get turned down a little bit for this? How do we turn this off? There we go. So, does any, do people have specific prayers they do when they say this? Okay, so let's start with everybody getting very calm, very centered, closing their eyes, breathing in and out, in and out, and thanking God for this magnificent day our magnificent life, for our magnificent country, and for all of us to be here today together and to be grateful. Breathing in and out, in and out, in gratitude and in love.
And now slowly and gently take a deep breath. Feel your feet on the floor and your body's in the chair. And slowly come back into the room. I want to take this opportunity to honor and thank Rabbi Bonnie for that beautiful explanation of Passover and the Passover Seder. Let's give our appreciation. And we will be asking you back for sure. <laughs> it was beautiful, really, and I really appreciate everyone asking the questions. My daughter was raised in this new thought teaching, and she said, it's so interesting for me, Mom, to hear about Passover and for the Seder. So there's many of us that have never been able to understand it the way we do now. So thank you so much. So now if you'll take your programs, we will, have our, we will um, read our closing invocation together. <laughs> Father, Mother, God, and Goddess, thank you for the blessings we have received. Be with us now as we leave this sacred circle and go forth into our daily lives, taking the energy generated here tonight out into our homes, our work, the people we love, and all we touch. May we be your open channels into this world each day. Again, I just want to thank Reverend, Rabbi, Rabbi, Rabbi. We have too many reverends around here. Rabbi Bonnie for being here tonight and for Marianne Lewis. Uh, her beautiful singing and her CDs are out on the table, so I would encourage all of you to go out and um, look at that and take her home with you. So. Great. Rabbi Bonnie has information about uh, what she does and how she can be of service to any of you, and it's under that green painting in the back. So, and I'm sure she would love to speak to any of you at the end. And may I add, there's plenty of lots of people want to take some home or eat some more here, whatever you want. Please feel free to have it. Take the matzah. <laughs>